Hi, I've been covering a lot of topics recently with these videos dealing with concepts of MMT and pretty much debunking a lot of myths and fallacies of economics. I've also called out some shoddy journalism and I'm going to continue to do that. If your job is to be out there informing people, then I believe that is what you should do with truth and fact and nothing more. It's fine to have an opinion, but tell people it's your opinion and don't try to pass it off as reality. Okay, enough said. Today I want to review some of the concepts regarding government spending, taxation, debt, and deficits, along with the myths associated with these things. And I'm going to try to give you some talking points that you can use when discussing these ideas with your friends and colleagues. First and foremost, when we hear people say that we're broke or we don't have the money, it's important to understand that the government can't run out of money. The reply I often use is, what, we've run out of dollars? That usually stops people dead in their tracks and they're forced to think about the idea and also to accept the fact that the government simply can't run out of dollars. They have no choice but to accept this because it's the truth. But usually they'll come back to you with the line, oh, well, that's just printing money. And if the government prints money, then the money becomes worthless and you get inflation and maybe even hyperinflation. And then you say, no, that doesn't happen either. In fact, the opposite happens. When the money is paid to people and firms to create more goods and services, the supply of goods, services, and real assets increases along with the money supply and prices don't rise. It's impossible. As long as the supply of stuff increases at a rate equal to or faster than the growth in the money supply, there cannot be inflation. Doesn't matter how much money you've printed. Moreover, as the stock of real wealth increases, well, that's the definition of an expanding economy and a higher standard of living, so the value of the currency stays stable or even rises because it's in demand as a necessary unit of transaction and also to meet higher nominal tax obligations that we're going to need to pay. Only when we can't produce anything, when the rate of money growth or the speed at which we spend it exceeds our ability to physically make more stuff, that's when bad stuff like inflation happens. And that usually means when every single person who is able to work is working, not just here in our own country, but in the entire world. At that point, we can say that we have a situation of too much money chasing too few goods, which I guess you could call that the classic definition of inflation. And by the way, even if you have inflation, so what? I mean, why is that any worse than deflation, which is something you get under like a gold standard or, or some other uh, fixed money regime? They're both bad, but it's really dumb to say that, hey, we should avoid printing money and be happy with deflation and high unemployment, even though we are far, far away from the conditions that would trigger inflation. And again, even if we got inflation, I bet that most people would rather be working and paying higher prices than to be out of work with no income at all and see whatever assets they may have collapse in value. Now, the other concept I want to talk about is the concept of taxes and redistribution. You hear this all the time. Oh, President Obama wants to redistribute income from the wealthy makers to the unproductive takers. Well, that's a load of crap. And by the way, calling working people takers is a disgusting and untrue pejorative. Working people are the makers because it is literally their work that makes the things we consume. The whole entire concept of redistribution is a lie, as I've shown before, by stating the fact that the government spends by printing money. It is not taking from someone with money and giving it to someone who doesn't have money. Does the government collect taxes? Yes, but those taxes are not needed for the government to spend what it needs to spend. It simply prints the money with no negative consequences, as I've explained. The real problem is we believe that we need to collect taxes in order for the government to spend, and that's why we continue to do it. 
but this is an obsolete arrangement left over from the days of the gold standard. The government does not need to tax in order to spend whatever it wants. And when it pays out a social security check or an unemployment check or gives somebody food stamps or even when it pays a soldier, it's not taking that money from some rich person and giving it to somebody who doesn't have money. And by the way, when the government runs a deficit, it's spending more than it's taking away from people. So it's literally adding dollars to the economy. And those dollars are also not taken or borrowed from rich people because the government doesn't need to borrow its own money that it can manufacture without limit. And by the way, the only way for us, the people, to get dollars is for the government to run a deficit. So it has to run deficit deficits in order for us to have dollars. Listen, I could go on, but I think I'll stop right here and let you mull that over. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and say, this is Mike Norman. See you next time. Bye-bye.